So in this first podcast, we're going to go over some basic definitions of Aston's bases, and we are going to also talk about what a strong, quote, strong substance is. So let's first start with what you guys probably have heard of the most, and probably the what I always call the middle school definition of an acid and base, and that's the Arrhenius acid and base. Now the Arrhenius is the most basic definition, and what it basically says is that all acids are considered a H plus transfer. So all acids like HCl, HBr, HNO3 have to have the ability to transfer an H plus. Now does that mean every compound that has hydrogen can be an acid? No. Methane, CH4, is obviously not an acid because you can't transfer the H plus. So it has to be able to transfer an H plus. Notice that all your acids must contain hydrogen. Fairly simple. A base must be able to take in that hydrogen and therefore has to be able to transfer OH minus. Okay, so what Arrhenius always said was the acid and the base will combine to form water. And that's where the H plus and the OH minus come into play. So in the base, you're always looking for compounds that contain OH minus. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH, calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. Okay. Again, notice that the base must contain OH minus. No OH minus, not a base according to the Arrhenius definition. Now, like I said, that's kind of a simplistic view. When you move on to high school level, we have to deal with what's called Bronsted-Lowry. Now, Bronsted-Lowry has a more encompassing definition of acids and bases. In theirs, an acid is a substance that donates a proton. For example, HCl, HBr, Hc2H3O2. Now, the last one being acetic acid, vinegar. So now you have a little bit of overlap with the Arrhenius, like HCl and HBr, but you also are now expanding your definition to other things that may or may not donate an H plus at all times. Acetic acid is what's considered a weak substance, which goes beyond the scope of our course. So notice again that our H plus is going to act as our proton. So Write this down and circle it. Put it in the margin and circle this. Acids will always have H+. Plus. Circle that. Now, that does not mean it will have H+, plus forever. When you move on to AP or college, you'll see there's different definitions of acids and bases beyond what we cover. But for our purposes here, acids will always have H+. Plus. Bases, now on the other hand, don't need to have OH-. minus. They just need to be able to accept a proton. So you have sodium hydroxide, which is an Arrhenius base, but you also have ammonia, NH3, which is a Bronsted-Lowry base. No OH minus, so ammonia can't be an Arrhenius base, but it still can accept a proton. So again, star this, OH is not required for the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. And that's the major difference between Bronsted-Lowry and, and Arrhenius, is that no longer do you need the OH minus. Now, under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, we have what are also called strong substances. Now, this of the three slides that I'm showing you is the most important thing that I'm telling you. You need to memorize what's on this chart. Now, I have not made you memorize the periodic table. I have not made you memorize ions, but you have to memorize this. Okay? So, a strong substance is a substance that completely dissociates in water. Notice that strong is in quotes. Strong does not mean dangerous. Strong does not mean concentrated. Strong means completely dissociates in water. If I said to you concentrated, concentrated means high molarity. That means dangerous. It does not mean strong. So there are seven strong acids and seven strong bases. Your acids are HI, HBr, HCl, HNO3, HClO3, HClO4, and H2SO4. Now, when they go into a chemical reaction, they look like this. This is what complete dissociation looks like the H plus and the Cl minus break up, okay? Instantly, there's no partial partiality. It is no longer HCl, it's completely H plus and Cl minus. But what you want to remember is this guy in a reaction is always just H plus, okay? Any of those seven, when they go into reaction, are basically going to be just written as H plus. Now, your bases, on the other hand, look different. Now your bases are sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Notice that they come from the first two columns on the periodic table. Na, Li, Li Na, K, Mg, Ca, Sr, and Ba are all alkali and alkaline earth metals. When they go into solution, they will always just act as OH-. Okay. 
So basically, strong acids are considered 100% H+, and strong bases are considered 100% OH-. This will come up in the next podcast when we talk about chemical reactions involving acids and bases and how to identify them in the reaction without just if they're not one of these 14. So again, memorize these. Do not forget them. You will need them regularly throughout this unit.